as well as my swim did this morning. So I've already been in there, getting ready to go, getting pumped up because you have to have some energy to write a business description. And um, I have a feeling that maybe some of you are here today, like Laura said, because you were encouraged to come to this presentation because somebody read your business description and took a deep breath and had to take a moment to figure out uh, what it is that you actually do with your startup. So today's plan, I'm going to tell you why you need to have a business description. I'm going to tell you how it's different from maybe your company profile or something that's in your business plan. And then on your tables, you'll find a set of handouts, and then I'm going to make you do a little bit of work. Um, and then we might read it aloud. But I uh, promise to try to knock this out in 60 minutes or less, and we are down to like 49, so uh, let's get going. So what is a business description? Um, it is sometimes referred to as an about me or a bio section, so this is a lot shorter than maybe you are used to. Uh, writing for uh, in your business plan or maybe a longer format section on your website. Um, anyone who reads your company description should get a clear idea of what your business does as well as the hole that you're working to fill. Sounds easy enough, right? Okay. So why do you need a business description? So um, a lot of times you'll be asked what it is that you do in passing, even in the hallways here. You know, tell me about your business. And it's kind of like an elevator pitch, perhaps, or not. You know, something really short and sweet where I can walk by and say, hey, it's nice to meet you. Tell me about your startup, and then you'll tell it to me, and I know exactly what it is that your business does. That's the importance and the reason why you need to have a business description. Also, for when people visit your website, your social media pages, a lot of times with a business description, you'll need to reformat it and make it shorter and shorter depending on the profile or where you're going to use it, whether it's LinkedIn or Facebook or Instagram or any other social media platform, but also for your website. Um, even when someone searches your website, say on Google, there'll be a short description come up and it's got to be very, very short. And so this is certainly a challenge. Um, when I told my mom, bless her heart, that I was going to teach you how to write a business description in 60 minutes, she said, oh honey, that's probably not long enough. I'm like, well, that's all we've got. So it will make it short, and then you'll have an opportunity to take it back uh, to your team or to a friend or even send it back to me, and I'll help you finish it off. So I have three examples to show you before we get started of a couple of business descriptions um, or types of business descriptions. Uh, the first is for Gooder. Um, leveraging intuitive technology and nationwide logistics to divert waste and get food to those who need it most. I kind of have a hunch that I know what it is that they do. Does everyone agree? So, pretty short, pretty sweet. The next is uh, a description from Facebook. Uh, very different uh, type of business. Um, our mind power, this is Rise Athletes, we train mindset. Our mind power coaches are Olympic, professional, elite, and post-collegiate athletes trained in the fundamentals of mindset development. They lead a results-driven mind power coaching program that helps teen athletes overcome mindset blocks and performance pressures, learn how to regulate emotions, prepare for competitions, and gain tools to enhance overall mental wellness. So this is a little bit longer than the other one, but it still tells you exactly what it is that they do and the hole that they're filling and why they do it, even for their audiences. There's a lot of keywords in there. I'm gonna bring up keywords again, but there's a lot of keywords in there. My third example is MailChimp, the platform that I log into way too many times a day for my clients. I think I can tell you what the description is for this, and I'm sure that you might all know it too. Um, MailChimp is an all-in-one marketing platform for small business. They probably could have stopped there, but they kept going. We empower millions of customers around the world to start and grow their business businesses with our smart marketing technology, award-winning support, and inspiring content. I, I could have left off the next part of it, but. That, that's another example of a business description. 
So now that I hope you're understanding what I mean by a business description, I'm going to give you some tips for writing a business description before we get into the, the handout. So the first tip is to figure out how to best express your company's brand through text if you want your company description to be effective. Uh, when I say effective, I mean that a uh, curious potential investor or a customer should get a glimpse of what you stand for just from reading the description. Do you think that's something you could do? I saw some smiles and a lot of people look away, so I think we have our work done for us. <laughs> um, it also has to be short and pretty succinct. Um, as an example, um, you know, I get referred a lot of startups from um, Enterprise Works, and I think that that's awesome. Um, and I want to do my homework before our first meeting, and I look up your startup, and I have a really hard time trying to figure it out what it is that you do sometimes. Like, I see a name, and I find a description somewhere, or a Google search, um, but it takes having a meeting, almost an hour conversation before we get started. Um, and so that's why it's important to have a good business description. Um, and if you have a lot of words to talk about your business, or how you got here, or things like that, save that for your autobiography. I will read it, I promise. Just keep it out of your business description. The second one is keep it as short as possible. Obviously, in the two examples that I shared, the two examples that I shared, three examples, uh, one was really short, one was a little bit longer, and the other was even longer. But I wanted to give you a couple of examples. They're still short in comparison to maybe a description that is in your business plan um, or something like that. Um, so we will work on making it short. The third is to show enthusiasm for your business. I assume that you spend a lot of hours a day and many, um, maybe in some instances, years nurturing this startup to where it is right now. And you are very enthusiastic about it, probably most days. Maybe other days you're like, oh gosh. But most days you're really enthusiastic about it. So find a way to show that enthusiasm so the person that's reading it um, you know, is really interested in learning more because they're enthusiastic about it. The fourth tip is not always going to work for every startup, but make it personal. Is there a reason why this is so important, why the startup is important? Um, an easy example is maybe you have a pediatric medical device and you have children, and this device is going to change the world for other children because dot, dot, dot. I mean, that you are a parent, you have children, they have issues with, I keep looking at these two doors from where I used to be with the startup many years ago, so that startup helped kids with ear infections, and one of the co-founders' kids have ear infections all the time. So there's a way that you can make the description personal when you talk about it. Where are we at? Tip number five, only include the most important information. Um, this is where it comes down to making it short and succinct and to the point. Um, it's easy to start adding a bunch of extra information because you live and breathe this day to day and you know so many complexities of your startup that might overwhelm the first conversation you have with someone um, in describing your business. So. Finding ways to make it, um, like I said, short and only include the most important information in that first description. Obviously, we can build out some key benefits and additional information throughout your website, um, add things on your social media profiles, etc. But try to only include the most important information. Um, and lastly, edit, edit, edit. That might seem really obvious. Um, but I can't tell you how many times professionals have sent things out into the world with a typo. Don't read any of my slides too closely because I am notorious for typos. But when it comes to your business description, please read it, read it again, read it backwards, have a friend read it, I don't know, read it over and over again and make sure that it flows, that you've got the commas in the right place and that the words are spelled correctly. Yes? Have your mom read it. Oh, yeah. Have my mom read it. There you go. <laughs> All right, so let's start writing. Does everybody have their handouts close by? 
before, before we get to that part, does anyone have any questions so far? How much would the demonics have been on your mission statement? That's a great question. We'll talk a little bit about a solid mission statement or a vision that's clearly or be really succinct in, in writing these three sentences that describe what is what make you different from your competitors, words that you know you use regularly, maybe on your website. Um, there was the example. The Mind Power Coaching one, they had a lot of, of uh, quality keywords in there. Words that I know that they use regularly regularly on their social media and on their website and in describing their business and selling and pitching their business. It might also be an opportunity for you to go back through and edit some of the things that you wrote. If you aren't able to circle a few keywords, maybe go back and Reread what you wrote and add to it. Yeah. All right, now it's sharing time. Who wants to go first? Everybody raise your hand. What? Everything you just wrote. Everything you just wrote. I think I saw your hand come up. You win the prize. Thank you. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, we are Better Technologies. Uh, we help civil infrastructure owners assess the condition of their structures uh, using smart wireless sensors. Uh, we help stakeholders make informed decisions uh, about their buildings to improve public safety uh, and at a fraction of the cost which is linked by IT technology. Uh, we stand for safety, reliability, confidence, and peace of mind. Uh, the keywords uh, that are critical are infrastructure, structural health, uh, informed decisions, smart sensors, and safety. Awesome. That was really good. Can anyone follow up to that one? That was really awesome. So the next step, yes, I'm going to have to have you read it. So the next step after you hear it out loud is to, on the next page, the next page described everything that was on here just in case you wanted to take it home or try it again or give it to a friend. But on the third page is where you actually write out your description. You'll take the key points from what you wrote down, like who you are, what you do, why you do what you do, what you stand for, and make sure that you include those keywords that you pulled out. That's, that's the, uh, the final piece to all of this. So let's hear another one for inspiration. OK, so just to note, this isn't a company that's running yet, but it, I, I want to eventually run um, in the future. So. Great. Uh, we are timely. We are a skill sharing platform for people to exchange skill, skills and services by redefining the currency with time versus fiat money in order to enhance engagement in the community. And we do this because we want to combat social isolation, especially post COVID, to rebuild our relationships in our lives and to give people an opportunity to share their passions with others. We believe everyone has something to offer and that everyone has value to give through generosity. And some key words that we have are time, relationships, generosity, give, value, and opportunity. I'm impressed so far. This has been really good. Uh, so now that you've read all of that out loud, I think maybe you're ready to start writing out the description on page three. All right. I'd like to hear another one. <laughs> Is it a team effort back here? Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> All right. You read this and I go back and read our door sign. Okay. And see if things change. <laughs> anyway, um, we are a dentomat. We help businesses onboard customers online uh, by verifying their customer identities and um, help them prevent fraud. Um, we do it to make a lot of money um, and, of course, to make 
a world better place by enabling truly digital economy through the trusted online identities. Uh, we stand for trust, privacy, inclusion, and, um, and our keywords are identity verification, digital trust, remote services, onboarding, anti fraud, etc. Where is your door? Yeah. 124. Okay, I'm gonna go read it. I'll read it, I'll read it to everyone. <laughs> Identimat is an online identity verification solution provider helping organizations in highly regulated industries onboard customers remotely, instantly, and securely. Right? High five. That was, that was really good. Awesome. We have time for more sharing. Okay. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, we are at Frost Defense and Biotech. We decrease early spring frost in vineyards and fruit crops. And we have a technology that is a non-toxic, biodegradable, and a decision support system. So why we do uh, why we do this? Because the spring frost is a huge problem worldwide that is on the rise because of climate change. And um, uh, so we want also to do this to help uh, viticultures and fruticultures grow um, to maintain their profitability, profitability <laughs> and lifestyle. And what we do, what we stand for is empowering, protect the environment, inform, inform decisions uh, about uh, frost management and hope. And the key words are empowering, biodegradable, non-toxic, uh, a damage decrease, profitable, climate change, and environmental friendly. Awesome. So from from this, can you turn to page three and and uh, put it all together in how many lines did I get you? Six lines? Yeah? All right. Anyone else want to share before you move on to the last page? So we're at Pavara. We're developing alternatives uh, to surgical sterilization of companion animals and livestock. And why we do it is for a more humane treatment of animals and to reduce side effects of the current treatment models. Um, and uh, I believe it'll increase uh, employee morale. It's applicable in the U.S. and the global market. And uh, we also would like to make profit. So our keywords are safe, effective, cheap, humane, alternative, animal health, uh, better, and easy. I'm not going to pick on you. Yeah. But I will. So we have, we have cash energy. Um, what we do is long duration energy storage that can be safely installed anywhere and transported everywhere. So it's like one sentence of what we do. Um, why we do it? To accelerate clean energy adoption and make clean energy accessible and affordable for everyone. Um, keywords are energy storage, clean energy, energy affordability, energy accessibility. <laughs> Good job. All right. Let's move on to the last page. Uh, I want you to take everything that you wrote, especially those keywords, maybe even transfer those, rip, rip the thing part actually, and set them side by side, that way you can see it right next to the page. And pull out the key points that you wrote down, the keywords about that you pulled from who you are, what you do, why you do, what it is that you do, what you stand for. I do appreciate that you want to make a profit from this, but we'll probably leave that part out of the business description, but I, I do love that very much. Yes? I have a question. Yep. So, you like to give up any business descriptions, and most of them say that you're safe, you're cheap. I guess like, close for everybody. 
Yes. Yeah. Just it's so much that it kind of loses its value. Yes. I don't like if you have any comments on why would I even use mental health for the safety of the I should have known that you would make this. I the exact same question. I should have known that you would make this comment because I know that we've had this conversation before about using words that everybody else uses to describe similar things or what their business does. Safe, safe, uh, words like safe, cheap, cheap affordable, affordable, environmental, environmental safe. safety. You don't want to sound like everyone else. You want to sound unique. And sometimes you have to use some of those words. But once you write it all out, if you have noticed that you have used those words, kind of underline them and think about, uh, are there alternative ways to say the same thing, but with more enthusiasm, that was one of the tips, or with more authenticity. Um, that's why I gave you two, a, a version one and a version two on that sheet, so you could write it a second time, um, and have a second version to read through, go from compare and contrast. Um, that way you have an opportunity to say the same thing again in a slightly different way, especially if you found yourself using some of those words that maybe are a little overused or... Um, yes, yes. It's also challenging too because we know when you, when, you have a, when you have a science background, you know, those are relative terms and they don't speak in relative terms. Um, but yeah. We think we should use them in our marketing strategy. <laughs> yeah. like cheap and safe. And, yeah. and, and sometimes there may be words eventually down the road, depending on how, um, you know, like my example is working with companies that have to not say certain things because of their FDA um, clearance or approval. And so there are certain words in their description uh, that we can't use or that we have to use. And so your business description may evolve a little bit if you get to points in time where those things come in play. But um, start by writing uh, the description on the first, the top section of the page. Can we hear it? Sure. Thank you. Uh, Amend our attack counts infrastructure owners, assess the health of our structures, uh, enabling informed decisions about safety and maintenance. Revolutionary IoT sensor technology allows us to do so with a fraction of the cost of existing solutions. All right, does everyone understand what, what their startup does, what their business does? Everyone's busy writing. Don't take offense to that. That was pretty good. Do you think you need to write a second version and compare and address? Definitely. All right. I should have made a second page for this so you can have version three and four because, you know, yeah, take ashes. <laughs> I kind of read your completed one already from your. I was just really trying to find out. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Tell, tell the group what you just said again. Um, I have a document with you know multiple versions of description slash an elevator pitch that are 15 word elevator pitch, 15 second elevator pitch, 30 second elevator pitch, one minute, etc. So. Because, as you mentioned in the beginning, lots of different events, lots of different uh, platforms require you to have this ready to submit, ready to meet it. And of course, at the, in conversations, too, uh, they come in handy. Um, go. I couldn't find the document on my phone, sorry. That's OK. So I really appreciate you um, stating that again to okay. everyone in the group. Having something like this, I assume, saves you a lot of time when something comes across your email where it's, hey, I need this by this afternoon, or say there is a reporter that needs a description, or if you um, are like some folks that I've worked with before, wait until the deadline to sign up for an event and have to shoot it in that day, not to say that you procrastinate at all, but aren't we all just a little bit of procrastinators? And you don't have time to reinvent the wheel and write it again and again and again. You already have it lined up and ready to go. And it's all about consistency. Finding 
the same way to say what it is that your business does in shorter, even shorter, even shorter little snippets. So that's the ultimate goal, is to have a document like, like these folks do. All right, let's hear another uh, version one description. Yay. Thank you. Okay, you're good. We're Progeo. We enable low cost, low carbon energy future through subsurface underground storage while being trusted stewards, well, good stewards, and trusted partners in the communities that we operate. Great. Very good. Low carbon. Low carbon. Low carbon. Thoughts from the group? I think that that is an excellent start. I think it would be helpful to give it another version and see if you can say the same thing again and see if you can pull a few words out and replace them with a, a different word, if at all possible. Just, I know it's a, it's challenging because I'm sure that that's how you are used to describing it. So see if you can give it another version and then compare the two. Yes? Thank you. 